This is not just a school. Without it, life on the streets is all these learners have. The school accommodates 106 pupils from grade 1 to grade 7. In March 2010, the Department of Education committed to build a new school in the same year. Two weeks later, the Department of Education objected to the court order, saying its attorneys were not authorized to enter into that agreement. The entire school community is affected by the legal wrangling and delays. I would really love that we get a proper school. It's so hard when we have to practice for a sporting game because we don't have fields to train on. Most of the time we lose our games because we are not prepared. The girls that play netball are also struggling because there is no court for them to practice. We want a better school. When we miss the transport, we are forced to walk through that bushy area, which is not safe at all, especially for our schools. The playing area is very small. We need practicing fields for sport. There is also a leaking drain very close to the school that smells so bad and is not good for our health. The lack of sports grounds is also an issue. When my grandson and I speak, he always says that he wishes that his school could be like other schools, where they can have playing fields and be able to train like other pupils, so that when they go and play against other schools, they have practice enough on their fields. He always says, Mom, I wish we could get better playing fields, especially for us who love soccer. The school provides an occupational technical curriculum. With more space and proper infrastructure, more pupils can be enrolled. Definitely it will improve the results of the school and our efforts to assist our learners to succeed. Because if we can have a proper school building, that building will cater for the skills side, occupational uh, technical curriculum, because we'll expand that. Even at the moment, we do have uh, equipment for a saloon, but we don't have a classroom to put those. We have not started that one. So the beadwork, the sewing um, and craft work, we are doing that in one building. And then pottery in another building. So we, we, we really have limited space as soon as we can get a proper school building then we'll be able to cater for such children who cannot access the normal curriculum land for the proposed school has been identified but it's bound to be a cumbersome process most recently um, it looks like there is no option but to again approach the court um, to direct that the department fulfill their obligations. Um, the Department of Human Settlements was not a party to the original court proceedings, therefore it's necessary for us to probably join them in the, uh, well it will be necessary for us to join them in the next round of litigation. Obviously we would really like to avoid going back to court to enforce something which is such a, a clear breach of the children's light, uh, right to education and to learn in an environment with dignity. Um, so we are hoping that the Department and the Department of Human Settlements will come to their senses and take the necessary steps to make the land available. The CMC office in, in Makanda has had meetings with the, with the SUP and the local community and they, they are working out, trying to work as speedily as possible to find a solution to this matter so that indeed the land can be transferred formally to, to the school so that we, they can take it from there. Ten years after the court ruling, pupils and teachers are still waiting. Despite the odds, the hunger for knowledge, insatiable. Lerat Ofekisi, SABC News, Makanda.